Alrighty, it's Monday, March 19th, 2012. And because I can't sleep, it's 3.30 in the morning. At 3.30 in the morning, it's time for comments X. Well, one of the reasons why I can't sleep, and this is kind of bizarre, is that uh, there was no Sunday common X because Saturday and Sunday for me were one day. Uh, that's right, I pulled an all-nighter. There was no sleep during either Saturday or Sunday. So, when that happens, there's only one common X because uh, two days become one. That being said, um, I was able to talk to a number of people about uh, uh, my show. Some of my friends and family at church are starting to watch the show, and there is a bit of buzz going around, and the comment came up was that came up was, what is with this? Uh, what what is about this about the uh, private funding? And so I feel that maybe I have not explained myself or explained it as clearly as it needs to be explained. Uh, and so I will make this attempt right now. There are two avenues through which science and scientists get their funding. The primary source is the government. They take your tax money and give it to scientists like myself who choose the uh, public route to do whatever they choose to do with it. And that means, you know, you know uh, uh, if they want to s study girls in bikinis, they can study girls in bikinis. If they want to study uh, uh, cow farts, they can study cow farts. And they've actually done this. They've actually spent... Uh, there are scientists who are up there who are studying... Uh, <laughs> they're literally studying cow, cow farts uh, in the name of global warming. And so they go up with, you know, to the government and say, we are doing a project on global warming. It involves X, Y, and Z in terms of, in this case, cow farts. And we would like X amount of dollars. And usually the X amount of dollars is in the millions of dollars. And the logic being that if you ask for anything less, then it'll be harder next time to get more. And so the pattern for most research firms, firms is uh, or should I say research institutes, is that uh, the more you spend, the better, because uh, uh, if you don't spend what you're given, then you can't go back and ask for more later on, so there's really no attention paid to uh, uh, what you're actually paying for if you're publicly funded. If you're a privately funded research institute, this means you cannot go and simply take money from the public. You have to go out and ask. And the money has to be earned or, or, or brought in from private sources. You can't simply go, go and expect there's going to be X amount of dollars pouring in. And you would, be, would think that the research produced in a private institute would be significantly less because they don't have as much money as the is the uh, the big public institutes do, but that would be an incorrect assumption. Here, I'll give an example. There is an area that's caught up and coming a new a new area of medical science known as neuroplasticity, and this is uh, how programmable and reprogrammable is the brain, the neuro you know the neuroscience, uh, the neurology. Uh, of the brain, you know, can you get if if there's a problem in the brain, can you go in and retrain the brain? And before the previous uh, in the 1990s, up, actually even to even to uh, late 2010, there was and there still is the strong belief that the brain is hardwired that you can that that the brain uh, is fixed at uh, at an early age. They usually say around six or seven that the brain becomes starts becoming fixed. And that everything that the brain experiences it experiences from this fixed points and, and doesn't change. There is no real fundamental change in the 
human brain from this age of six or seven and on. That's hardwired. That's the hardwired wire group of neurologists and neuroscientists. Uh, people like myself who, 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 are, who come from a background of physics and I understand uh, most of my neurology through the functions of uh, organic chemistry and, in, and f from computer science, there really wasn't a restriction for me to say, oh, the brain is hardwired. I say the ba the way I would approach it from physics is that the brain has a certain degree of probability in terms of how it functions, and then it has a sort of a malleable area where you can actually go in and start modifying things in terms of you know it, 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 you can modify th well you can modify things for the worse or you can modify things for the better. Uh, the the obvious uh, observation of modifying the brain for the worse would be al al alcoholism and drug, ad drug addiction. Uh, both of those can ha it will see an immediate it will see an immediate effect on the brain in terms of behavior. Uh, if the pr use is prolonged, there is a prolonged uh, effect on the brain in terms of the neurochemistry of the brain. Uh, and the thing is, is that alcohol is a very powerful uh, uh, organic acid in s and solvent inside of uh, organic chemistry. And because your body is essentially a massive uh, organic chemistry set, then alcohol behaves in your body in the exact same way it behaves in any organic chemical reaction. So it's not that alcohol is behaving differently inside your body in, in terms of uh, organic chemistry. It's behaving in the exact same manner. It's just that you are I introducing too much alcohol to the system. As a system encounters this excess of alcohol, the system adjusts and changes to this level of alcohol. And this actually, uh, this is the what they call the tolerance level of alcohol in the body, in the body, uh, particularly in the neuroscience. Uh, even though detrimental effects are happening to your body, and this is one of the one of the detrimental effects is the cirrhosis of the liver, but there is also a uh, neurological there are neurological side effects that occur as well. Uh, although with alcoholism uh, and you have that immediate thing, and then, but no immediate look. You know, no what we call no physical addiction. The brain doesn't physically become attached to it. There is a there is a change in the chemistry and the neurochemistry that uh, can actually be passed on from generation to generation. If, if you were looking for a genetic uh, uh, disposition for uh, alcoholism, and that's not clear yet at all, because most of the test for a alcohol gene really doesn't seem to exist. I mean, th some people are claiming that it does, but they, you know, they've done it on inbred mice. And so, it, it, there, a lot of a lot of the laboratory standards in which. Um, uh, these tests are done, including uh, these the, looking for these neurological genes, the, the the genes of behavior. The tests in research is highly questionable. There's an enormous amount that's simply just glossing over, and most of the experiments can be sort of really uh, challenged on very simple principles in terms of how you approach. Uh, experiment, you know, your experiment and the results that are, that are produced. So, uh, it's difficult to say, and at this point in time, I'm not willing to say that you can associate behavior with, with genes. This behavior is passed on in terms of 
what, they, what most people call environmental factors. Uh, I would say it's a uh, unseen, or I would call it the soul, that the soul to soul uh, it does have an interaction, and that you have a soul to body interaction, sort of a, 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 a mind to brain or mind to neurology interaction, and that goes both ways. And in this, we have an enormous amount of evidence of this. This, is, in one case, is the placebo effect. The other case would be, it's, and again, the, for, this is for the worst. This is drug addiction, where the, the brain physically comes attached to a particular neurochemical. It requires it, and if the, well, even if it's introduced, that, that requirement is introduced you have a result on both sides of the introduction and the, with, and the sort of withholding uh, the deprivation of this, this neurochemical. On both sides you have uh, a neurological response or a behavioral response. And so what happens is, uh, using this as an observation, it became clear that, that you can have a Call a programmable or soft programmable brain and neurology, and the, this conclusion, in terms of that I came to, and sort of through my research, which I spent, uh, you know, not much at all. I mean, I spent li literally less. Li I mean, I mean, my budgets are uh, about one thousandth, right? Take the uh, if for every dollar I spend. Uh, a public institution will spend a thousand dollars, so I can get a uh, million dollar research done for about a thousand dollars, or even even less than that. So I was able to do uh, the research and get the results in terms of neuroplasticity and the understanding of neuroplasticity that a more expensive institute would have achieved. My problem is, rather than simply walking up to the government expecting more money to be handed over to me, I have to go out and find funds. And this is what the privately funded research is about. This whole the the link in the download bar here. If you look down here, the first link is the private funding. Well, that's what this is. That it the, the it that's how, and it's not all of how I pay for it, it's some of how I pay for my bills. Right? I pay for that research. And it's rather than expecting the money from you in terms of going to the government and being a, a publicly uh, funded research institute, I'm a privately funded research, meaning that I have to ask you if you're willing to, uh, you know, give me some money. That's what it basically is. I'm asking you if you're willing to give me some money. That's the blunt uh, side of the thing. If you are, great. If not, then I have to go someplace else to find that money in order to keep doing the research that I do. And but for me, because my, my research institute doesn't spend the amount of money that a public institute does, for me, ten dollars a month. If you can spare ten dollars a month, that's more than enough for me. That's that's fine. Uh, I don't need the thousands of dollars, the millions of dollars that other research institutes have, because uh, the way I'm able to, 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 the way I manage my budgets, it's simply not a necessity. So this is the research funding. This is uh, how I pay for the research that I do here. Uh, if you want to follow the research I do here, uh, there's Big Bang Theory RRL is the behind the scenes work of my research. You will see more and more of the work I do as I bring out my my YouTube channels. This is instead of publishing to uh, you know private journals or whatever, uh, my, the research I'm bringing all the research out to, into the public sphere. You can comment, you can video response, you can do whatever you want if you, you know to, to do these videos. Uh, this is instead of doing a closed peer review where you go to a a you know a small group of people to to sort of review the research work that you're doing. Uh, it's fully 
uh, fledged out to the public. You can see what's going on. You can see the work that's being produced here. Uh, you can see the progress. And you can judge for yourself whether or not you find there's something worth going on here that you wouldn't mind spending, you know, ten dollars a month on. And then if not, that's fine too. That's you know, that's not you know, <laughs> you know, that's the, the whole purpose of being privately funding is you're asking a person uh, whether or not they would mind uh, spending, you know, sparing ten bucks a month. And if they do, great. And if not, then you know, there, you know, I have to look at the, at, at other options, and I am looking at other options. So. And you'll sort of see these as these develop. You'll start seeing more and more of these things sort of pop up in the down below bar, or, or a little ad pop up in here, you know, uh, letting you know that there are other, you know, options uh, available and things I'm doing that we'll call spin off products. This is the way, you know, the NASA, when uh, NASA produced its work, which is primarily academic, a lot of things spun off of NASA. Uh, you know, most of the modern medicine that that's around today is a result of the sort of the you know the pie in the sky views of these guys who wanted to create NASA. So, anyways, uh, that's it uh, for now. You know, it's 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 still uh, you know pretty pretty late, and no, I'm not sleeping. So, uh, you'll see this today. Uh, and I will be uh, working on my first day of uh, the uh, new schedule, uh, which will be working on trying to get out as many documentaries as I can during the week. That's the goal for this week. The goal for this week is to see how many documentaries I can put out. Uh, as for the shows, uh, Cybernet Cyborgs and Cybernetics and Ubuntu BSD Unix et al., Right now, those shows are on hiatus. Um, I'm not aiming to bring them back until September. However, a large chunk of the sections, and that's the reason, I'm, let, me, let me clarify this. The reason why I'm, I'm putting the shows on hiatus is because a large chunk of the content is being rolled into Comments X. So, the content that would be in uh, Ubuntu, BSD, Unix, Atel, and Cyborgs and Cybernetics is going to be here uh, inside Comments X of uh, uh, inside Comments X and on Big Bang Theory RL. That's because uh, there is a chunk of Big Bang Theory RL, particularly the Omega construct, that's moving off the other channels. It's moving out of Big Bang Theory RL. It's at its beginning. Uh, and now it's moving. It's in the process of moving out of Big Bang Theorel into its own uh, particular channels, and then eventually into a documentary series. So uh, you, you kind of sort of see, you know, you're going to see the formation of shows and documentaries right end of the research right here on Common Sacks, right here in Big Bang Theorel. This is, as I said. The nerd show Big Bang Theory. This is the real life, life version of it. You're seeing behind the scenes. You're seeing. I'm sharing with you my life uh, and the the work that I do during the day. So, anyways, uh, I'll see you uh, tonight for the news. Uh, there'll be a new segment added to the news tonight. Uh, basically, on Mondays, which is after the weekend, I'm going to have an, a little uh, added section to it. And then uh, on Thursday, we'll, we'll also have a new, an added segment to the uh, news broadcast. All right, I'll see you tonight.